Hey everyone, welcome to Punkcast. My name is William Maxwell. I'm a student of Web3 and the owner of Punk9527. CryptoPunks are 10,000 uniquely generated characters stored permanently on the Ethereum blockchain. No punk is the same. This is a show dedicated to celebrating the punks behind the punk. My hope for this podcast is that we capture the essence of the punk culture, elevate the brand and the individual behind the punk. One last thing. Projects discussed on the show is not financial advice. Crypto and NFTs are a volatile and risky asset class. Please always do your own research. Other than that, let's go. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Punkcast. Today, we've got Punk3306. He's a three addy, wearing an earring, normal beard, and wild hair. In real life, he's a tech entrepreneur and founder of Punkscapes an NFT project uh, project focused on PFBs, that is profile banners. And today is a special episode of Punkcast as it's also a celebration of his one year anniversary of being a punk. Please welcome the talented Jalil.eth to the show. Jalil, welcome to the show, mate. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm well. Thank you for having me. It's a huge honor. It was was nice to meet you in real life uh, for NFT NYC at Punk's Park, skate park that we had. Yeah, that was incredible. That was awesome. Um, yes, we met in the in the punks in the skater park, right? Yeah, that was that was so cool. It was such a punk vibe there. Very, uh, very OG feel. Did you also go to the brunch? I did go to the brunch. Did, did you did you go to right. the brunch as well? Yeah, yeah, that was also incredible. I think um, I mean, it was so many people there. So we didn't didn't run into each other. But um, it was fascinating to me, like so many like the punk community is so diverse and I wasn't really aware before that. Right. So very cool to see so many different people. Was that your first, punk, was that your first punk gathering like in New York? Um, the first big one. Yeah. So there was a small one in Munich during like a smaller NFT conference in Munich, just like a couple months before the big NFT NYC conference. Um, and I got to meet like uh, a couple of cool, cool punks. Miguel, for example, the, the, the movie director, um, yes. He's doing this Caladita film. He was there giving a talk, and we met after, and it was lots of fun to to get to know like other punks in in real life. But I mean, didn't compare to uh, the craziness of the New York meetup. That was incredible, yeah. And also my first time in the states, so it was fascinating on so many levels. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, I, I share the same sentiment, although I did catch COVID, um, so I think they call that the uh, the real poap. Uh, the COVID pop-up that uh, everyone caught in New York, right? Yeah, I, I caught that as well. Yeah, on, <laughs> on my way back home, yeah. <laughs> Late flat the week after. Well, mate, uh, good good to see you again. And uh, really excited to um, have you as a guest on Punkcast. Um, and, and there's, there's yeah, probably a lot of things you. you can sort of uh, unpack. Maybe if you could just start off with um, a brief introduction to yourself and and uh, your background and how you found yourself into Web3? Sure. Um, Where do I start? So I come from a, um, like, I I grew up in a tiny village, like 80 people in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by forests. And I always wanted to become a forester, like totally non-tech, like went mountaineering all the time, slept in the woods, et cetera, et cetera. My grandfather was a forester, so I wanted to do that. Um, and then in my teenage years, I got into tech through music, like building band websites and stuff. And that was lots of fun. And I was into art and these kinds of things. Um, and then um, like the internet became really a place like it can be quite a, quite boring in, in like a little village uh, in the middle of nowhere as like a teenage boy. So the internet became uh, like a second home, I guess. And um and really like became fascinated with with technology and uh started learning how to program and stuff like that so so um that's like my my background then i studied information design which is like a marriage of programming and design and that was kind of my thing and i did that ever since and then only last year dove into uh, the web3 space yeah as a natural extension i guess of the previous web2 work that i did so when you say little village like where where was that like, where did you actually grow up in? 80 people, that, that's a very small, small community. 80 people, 200 cows, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I, I grew up here um, um, in uh, south of Munich, um, close to the Alps. Um, and the little village is called, it was called Rogersdorf. And uh, yeah, very cute little 
little little village and a great place to grow up lots of kids also so it was a it was a great time yeah yeah nice and and so and so you developed an an, an aversion for music um so talk to <laughs> us about that like how did you find your way into music and then uh, it's music and then internet is a pretty big shift right I, well, so the thing, how we like, I, I played in this metal band and um, how we like, how all the bands got together and like exchanged, I, I guess, ideas, did planned concerts and stuff like that was through MySpace. Um, and, and on MySpace, <laughs> we're able to like uh, customize the band site with like CSS or like a min, uh, like, I think it was just CSS, I guess, like the styling of, of web pages, basically. So that was my entrance into into like the, the coding world was like adjusting MySpace uh, uh, profiles for, for bands. And um, yeah, that, that was a, a ton of fun. And through that, so that was the natural, like from music into into like coding. And, and I, I really loved that, like uh, building something um, out of nothing. Like I had this old computer, this high tower, and it was like really bad, but at the same time, I was able to, to like build these, these little sites and then later like, like complete websites. Uh, uh, that was uh, just um, totally fascinating for me, like to create something out of nothing, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, did you, did you say metal bands? Like, like heavy, oh, yeah. heavy metal? <laughs> I'm a big metal guy. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> uh, that, that's, uh, that definitely has a punk vibe to it, right? So uh... it totally, yeah, it fits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a very street culture. Um punk folk are like like even if they look crazy on the outside, they're very mushy and, and soft on the inside. Most of, that's my my perception at least. So <laughs> right. uh, and so you you're gonna have to send us a couple of links to uh, some of the uh some of the songs you've you've made in the past. We could post it and share it with oh all the other god. Punks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> we we actually like the MySpace profile is still up, but they had like a couple of years ago they had a big data leak, data outage or something, and they just lost like a bunch of photos and and, and audio files, and that was the place where we stored our tracks, um, and they're just gone. Um, so so Ouch. yeah, that's my excuse right there. <laughs> well, and then come in the blockchain, so uh, so maybe you can make it a bit more permanent now with everything that you do make going forward. Right. Yes. Yes. I mean, the technical details of that are also interesting and the permanence question around that, right? But um, definitely. So during that process, um, you have to learn how to code and develop yourself? Had a natural... Yes, I mean, very coding, basic yeah. stuff, right? And then and then I truly, like, I, I came into it more from like a art perspective. So in school, I, I, I was good at arts. And, and I um, so in Germany, you have this, uh, and when you do your, or actually, that's how it used to be, when you do your abitur, like your high school, um, the finals basically you have to choose two subjects and mine was physics uh, which I was always super interested in in arts um, so I, I came into like the digital like I did some photoshop stuff also for these, these like band sets and stuff um, and then through that uh, uh, small steps into into programming and web development and then when I studied information design that was when I was properly exposed to like actual programming uh, and, and it's API development and databases and stuff like that I was very fascinated and kind of uh, struck a nerve and and then that's mostly what I did in my professional life since then yeah from from that point of view when did you start moving into uh, crypto blockchain mm. and then from mm. there into sort of nfts what was your sort of journey there there's like there, there's two chapters to that um, when I when I was uh, still in school or she, yeah, I was still in school. Um, I I found I was in this like online very left wing community uh, zeitgeist movement. They were like un anti money and anti everything. It was very interesting, like a kind of a rebel uh, in me at the time. And um, through that, I found Bitcoin uh, in two thousand eleven, and I actually started mining on my on my machine, and and th that ran for a few months or whatever. But then. Um, I was so anti everything. I was even anti the idea of digital money, like uh, 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 <laughs> like just get rid of everything, uh, uh, sort of. And then like so, I stopped that when I started studying. Uh, that machine went on the on the dumpster. Mm -hmm. So um, and I kind of forgot about it um, for for a few years. Um, and then only last year, a friend of mine, and or late twenty twenty, early twenty twenty one, dove deep into this whole when the whole like the people stuff started and the and nfts became like a thing 
um, in the art world. He's a designer, Jack Butcher, um, very cool brand on, on Twitter, Visualize Value. And he started selling NFTs on foundation and like sharing stuff with his online community in which um, uh, I was a member and uh, or am and um, was extremely fascinated, like uh, kind of kind of uh, confusing and bewildering uh, in a way also like these crazy prices for digital art um, was definitely something else. But uh, that kind of piqued my, my interest again and, and to, to look into it. I always like through my programming, like just Web2 programming years, I always was fascinated by um, Ethereum and, and the idea behind it, building smart contracts. That sounds super cool, but I never had a proper excuse to like dive into it. Uh, never had a project or, or, yeah, I don't know. And then through Jack um, and him like pushing this, this thing on all, on all of us, um, intrigued, like, was fascinating to me. And I think he bought a punk back then for, like, um, I don't know, 20 ETH or something. I don't remember. And, and I was like, damn, that level of conviction is, um, uh, like, was, was just fascinating. And I, uh, so I really wanted to understand and, and dive deep at that time. So that was, um, like, end of 2020, December, and then January. Um, yeah. And then in January, I actually lost a big, at the time, I was uh, just Web2 Software Consulting. And I lost a five, six month uh, um, contract. Um, and, and then suddenly I had all the time in the world to like, damn, okay. Um, um, and, and the interest was there. So, so I started learning uh, solidity and, and trying to like properly understand the blockchain and everything. Um, and, and yeah, that was extremely exciting. Started building like little extensions to smart contracts and stuff like that. Uh, uh, just open source little tools that I that I published and um, uh, that was kind of my my entry into into the space. Yeah. Just just out of curiosity, what kind of work did um, Jack make? Was it sort of just NFT one on ones on super rare or something? You should, or? Yeah, it's, so so it's one on ones. Um, so Jack, um, I I was really big into Naval. Um, if you know him on Twitter, he's like the founder of Agent a Angel List. Um, and Naval, every once in a while, while he tweeted about uh, blockchain and, and, and crypto as well. But it was mostly like um, sort of philosophy, business, um, that kind of stuff. Like, uh, and and um, I was very into into his content. And then suddenly in that timeline, um, uh, somebody uh, like Naval retweeted these amazing, simple, minimalist visualizations of Naval quotes. Um, I was like, damn, that's so cool. And with my like, background and like art and design it, it really spoke to me and especially like this this um this union of design business and philosophy uh, that like naval brought expressed like yeah in, in this artistic way was was extremely cool to see for me so um and that was actually like 2019 or something um that i that i found jack and his work he, he makes incredible vis visualizations on like truths but like very like simplified in a very beautiful way um uh, and he publishes them on twitter under visualize values what it's called and i just I'm completely in love with that and then at some point he started minting instead of sharing them on twitter um he, he started minting them on foundation so if you go foundation search for visualize value or jack butcher um then you can see like very simple black and white canvas uh, um very minimalist graphics um, there's some beautiful stuff there. And then his big, like the big crazy moment was he made an NFT called NFTs Explained, which like, two, it was just two rectangles. The left one said JPEG and the right one said NFT in the middle of the rectangle. And the top right was like this Twitter verification mark. And that went like completely bonkers. I think he sold it for like 70 ETH or something, like something insane. Um, and and uh yeah that's when when all of us were like "Woo, what is going on here <laughs> um, yeah it was yeah. a crazy time but i'm just looking at his stuff now it's uh it's pretty interesting so vv yeah. visualized value right fungible non-fungible yes uh mm. he's trying to educate a little bit um, yes also like he does these like very very good like also like simple simple visualizations on this on the on the space and on understanding nfts and crypto yeah. very very cool uh, big recommendation <laughs> yeah, yeah of course and he's got a he's got a cool crypto punk too no definitely and i, oh, yeah, I do remember a couple, yeah yeah 
I do remember uh, Naval Rivercard. He's uh, he's just dropped some amazing insights as well. I sort of love listening to the things yeah. he's got to say. Sometimes a little bit out there, but uh, 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 yeah, definitely some amazing amazing content. He has also like he has a simple pot, a little podcast as well. Um, yeah. with like five minute snippets. Very very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and the other who's the other guy? Um, I think Balaj as well. Um, do you listen to Balaj? Uh, who who Balaji? Yeah, Balaji. Sorry. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah man, I, I love Balaji. Like <laughs> probably he's, like 20, 30 hours of listening to Balaji <laughs> so far. Is like I I don't think I fully understand half of the content he comes out with because it like goes over my head, but like I can get elements of it right, and it's pretty exciting in terms yes. of what he's describing. Yeah, Balaji and Naval, very very cool. Yeah. So, so that was your um sort of first taste into this space through through jack yes yes and then actually like when i started learning uh uh, uh solidity and and started like publishing little tip, snippets and tidbits um um of what, what i was doing he invited me together with a few other friends to work on like a web3 um pseudonymous uh, uh identity project that uh, we came up with together and um that was uh, a, a very cool like, like learning while building something um extremely cool experience so um yeah we built this out we never published it but um it was an amazing learning experience yeah yeah that that's really interesting i've always um been curious about identity right would would you mind yes. sh sharing some of i guess the key concepts behind the project or is it is it sure. Yeah. I mean, so um, I, I don't want to say to, to, like the idea was really cool. I thought, and we never went out and like actually published it for various reasons. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, we felt in like it was May or something that we felt we were too late and it wouldn't be a valuable addition to the space anymore. Um, so we kind of stopped it, and then <laughs> that was that. But so the whole it was the idea was around um, build a, an easy way to build a pseudonymous identity online, and have a little decentralized profile with like um, your details and projects that you build and and stuff that you like are interested in and, and stand for. And I built out the smart contracts for that and try to like um, yeah like have a have a way for people to set like their profile details in a smart contract and then a simple. Um, adapt that that would display these uh, th these and and you could like that be and and there was had a, like an art component to it also very cool minimalist like uh, avatars um, that that um, so it was an NFT thing but it was more like a, a, an unlimited kind of idea and it was it was it, I still think it's very very cool but um, yeah we never ended up publishing it um, but yeah that was my my like building something and 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 learning how this stuff um works uh from a technical standpoint um was was very cool yeah um no super interesting and um i mean i'm just genuinely just curious about how entities identity is going to evolve in the space over the mm. next three to five years i mean the, the whole thing was hugely inspired by balaji funnily that, that you brought that up because he was we he was like talking about uh decentralized identity and pseudonymous identity a whole bunch at the time and we were all super fascinated by the idea of like um it's such an unlock if you think about it for like global participation um uh, and, and like what what counts when you're pseudonymous the only thing that counts is like is, is competence right um and, and you being able to show and communicate that well so very very fascinating yeah and and, and i think it goes back to this concept of trust and credibility right i think you can be pseudonymous but it's really hard oh, yeah. to prove tr trust, right? And I think, you know, in my mind is it's yeah. trust is built up based on consistency over a long period mm. of time. And a body and, of work that is provably yours, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, um, oh, cool. But uh, yeah, so um, super interested about that. But, um, and, th and then, so, so talk to me about from that sort of era, how did you find your way into discovering crypto punks? Like what was your sort of journey there? If I if I remember correctly, and, and, and like uh, sometimes with these little details, I'm not sure whether it was like a dream or something. But um, I I remember looking at CryptoPunks with my with my business partner at the time, um, way early, like when when um, 
when the crypto kitties were a thing we just looked at the stuff we never built anything and i, I saw crypto punks at like 800 900 dollars and i was like that is ludicrous that is so dumb <laughs> and, like, so, <laughs> and just to leave staring at this thing um i forgot about them again and then through jack like um when he bought his his first punk um that that was yeah, very fascinating for me i was like at the, at the around a 20 ETH mark i think so um so yeah very very fascinating completely out of reach for me at the time um but very intriguing to understand the why and how and what's going on in, in a collector's mind at that point like um many many question marks for me at the time so um i i again like discovered uh, or rediscovered punks uh, through through Jack and had then like gave me the conviction to try and truly understand what's going on there. Um, yeah. So, so, so talk us through that, like, um, cause I think everybody has their own journey around navigating through NFTs, right? Like when you first see right. it, you're like going JPEG on the blockchain, what is it? How mm. does this actually have any value? Like, what was it mm. for you or was there a point in time or a moment where you just go, I understand this and, and, mm. and how did you totally. sort of onboard sure. this? Um, I, when I, when I started learning solidity, um, I tried a few like online courses and stuff, nothing clicked and nothing worked. I was like, um, whatever, this, this is weird. I, I sat down and I just opened Etherscan and uh, opened the CryptoPunk smart contract and told myself, okay, this is manageable. It's like without comments, like 200 lines of code or something. Um, I'm going to learn Ethereum by reading the CryptoPunk smart contract and like understanding the, the, the CryptoPunk smart contract. Um, and uh, yeah, that's why like, I was so fascinated by the volume at the time on this little 200 code piece of software, 200 lines of code piece of software um, that I like line by line, I wanted to know exactly what it does. Um, then that led me to like, uh, that journey alone was also fascinating for me. Like um, at the time I had no idea, like uh, yeah, JPEGs on the blockchain, whatever, then under like going into the code and, and seeing, hang on. So there's just a hash of the image with the 10,000 punks in it, in the contract. So even that abstraction was, oh, interesting. Um, that like, um, uh, I never really like, um, I never really truly like understood some of the crypto, um, uh, like something like hashing, for example had really as a software developer had no idea previously so J um, jalil could, do yeah, you mind just ahead. unpacking that a little bit too because i'm curious like i'm i'm a noob when it comes to sort of technical terms and stuff like that but, but it might be worthwhile yeah. if you just explain a hash and i guess that abstraction of it because i i mean i don't think i fully understand that too uh, all right you... yeah yeah sure so you can imagine a hash basically um as a as a function that, that does something and you give the function some content could be anything like some data could be text could be like the the data of an image file could be an audio file, whatever um, um the data that makes up that that um uh, the, the, that file um you give that to the hash function and what it gives you back is a fixed length string that looks like completely random um with out of like numbers and, and characters and that is an like identifier of the content that you passed in and whenever you pass in that same content you will get the exact same hash but if you change only like one letter one pixel in in in, in the input for the hashing function you get something entirely different so um it's a very fast like it's an identifier in a way for for a file if you if you want um mm. uh, for any content so you you give it some content and what you get back is a is a identifier that is um uh, impossible to uh, also an interesting characteristic of it is that it's impossible by just seeing the hash it's impossible to know the input data right um but uh, uh, anybody ha given the input data can easily prove that the hash is like the identifier for 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 uh, that input so let's say we have the CryptoPunk image with the 10,000 punks in it, um, uh, uh, 100 by 100, right? Um, put it into the hashing function, what you get back is, and there's multiple different hashing algorithms, um, um, but then what you get back is this, is this uh, uh, string of like random looking numbers and text. If somebody were to change this, just one pixel in this entire punk, uh, 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 big punk image, um, then you would get a completely different hash. 
So that's how you can always prove is the punk image that I'm looking at with all the 10,000 punks, uh, uh, of course, but is that the same that was re referenced in the CryptoPunk contract? Mm -hmm. um, and just understanding that on like the, the so, and, and then also like that the identifier for a punk isn't like it, the actual image, but just a number. And it's the index from zero to 9,999 on that, on that uh, uh, big punk image. And that was the social consensus. If you, if you are the owner of this number, then all of us agree that the punk at that position in the big punk image is yours. Um, that was at first, even that weirded me out. Like, oh, that's so weird. Uh, but then, uh, uh, after a while, like you understand the genius of it. You don't need anything more than this number to identify. You don't need the images on the chain. You have the identifier of the image on chain and everybody can store the image. And you always know whether the image that you have is the actual or original punk image. And then that's all that's needed. And then what you end up with is like this. 200 lines of code that has a marketplace included in it uh, that has all this like knowledge about uh, management of ownership etc extremely fascinating on, on so many levels like not just like art but could be applied to anything and it's all automated and permissionless and uh, uh, just fascinating yeah I can, I can I can sort of see your mind rattling around given your sort of art design background and your sort of technical engineering background trying to unpick that <laughs> yeah and, and so, so talk to me. So when you came out of, I guess, you know, that review of the punks contract, um, did you feel that at that point in time, it was special? And I guess, I guess the question is, is what compelled you or got you along the curve to actually buying a punk? Was it that sort of work? And then the, the things that Jack was telling you, like, how did you, mm. you know, what, what, what led you to making the decision to purchase your punk? I mean, when I when I did that exercise, after that, I was like, damn, I really want to punk. Um, <laughs> if I ever have the means to buy one, um, but like it was the bull market, they were getting completely out of reach for me. Um, uh, but I had this in my mind, like I want to, I, I, I want to, I want to punk. <laughs> um, yeah. When, when, when was that? Was that June 2020? That was sort of oh, like... that was like... Uh, June 21, um, no, it must have been like February, February 2021. February, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the floor price would have been about twenty or so ETH, and ETH would have been relatively twenty or so ETH at the time. Yeah. Um. And me, like losing that six month contract, and like I wasn't like I was like wasn't in the position to like spend that amount uh, uh, of money. I I have kids and a family. My my wife would have been uh, gone crazy <laughs> if I did something like that. <laughs> so. Um, no, but I had it in like at, at that point I was like, this is so interesting and um, I, it would be awesome to own like uh, this historical artifact, uh, uh, um, this this um, amazing, like uh, a part of this amazing piece of software, the, the CryptoPunk smart contract. Yeah. Amazing. And then, so from that point in time, so that was February, 2021, mm. when did you actually buy your first CryptoPunk? So it was uh, yesterday, so a year, exactly a year one ago. year ago. That's right. That's yeah. right. So, yeah. Happy, yeah. happy punk anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Good memory. Um, so, so October, late October in 21, you bought it. Okay. And, um, yes. yes. So, so talk, yeah. So talk me through, I guess, your purchasing journey there. Like, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting to me because I think most people, when they buy punks, they buy it for the aesthetic feel for the social flex mm. and just a game of triangulation in terms of how to figure out how to build it as a brand and monetize in a different way. I think speaking to you, mm. I think I, I get the sense that you're just really appreciating it for its code, its historical provenance and the foundations of it, as opposed to the oh, yeah. extrinsic stuff. Right. Which is a little bit I, of a different. You, like this entire, like the, the investment, uh, angle in the space i have a trouble keeping up i have trouble understanding i don't come from a financial background i'm not the like best businessman <laughs> i would like to be but uh 
um, like I, yeah, I, I come from it, yeah, from a, from like the technical appreciation and, and um, being fascinated by by the tech and, and the art, I guess, also, yeah. And I mean, of course, I mean, uh, the the look of the punk was important to me, but um, so so I, I I went hunting and looking. Yeah. So, um, so, so talk talk us through that. I mean, um, how did you? How, did it take you long to to buy? You know, three three zero six. You know, with the wild hair. Like, uh, were you looking at mm. different traits? So the, or... first, the original punk that I bought was six eight two zero, and uh, it was basically the same punk as I have now, just with a, a, a wider, longer chin and the chin strap beard. And now I have okay. a simple, normal beard, and it's like I like uh, I like it simple. I like it clean. So, uh, but other than that, the the punk is the same. So I, I just exchanged the two uh, a few months ago. Um, and uh, the six eight two zero has a wonderful new owner, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, uh, was, was, was there anything particular about the wild hair that attracted you to that special trait, or? I mean, I always had I had I had I used to have very long hair uh, and then crazy hair, and uh, like it spoke to me. I have an earring on on on, on the right side, so like it was a perfect match. And and mm-hmm. and also Jack's punk, his main punk, is also a wild hair punk. So I felt like. Um, I'm I'm his little brother buying buying uh, a similar punk. <laughs> Got it. We'll, we'll have to get Jack on and ask him uh, if he knows that as a fact. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's so, maybe it's, it was the it uh... so cheesy to to hear that. But, uh, just, uh... <laughs> no, I think he'd be flooded. I mean, I'd be flooded. But um, but that's kind of cool, right? Because I think it sounds like it uh, links back to I guess your metal, uh, metal sort of music vibes back then as well, right? Which uh, which is kind of yeah. cool. So like, t- talk to me um, about. What is it that you're working on right now, and what do you sort of find interesting? Because I um, I know you're working right. on Punkscapes, which is a pretty cool project. Thank you. I mean, so Punkscapes gave me um, gave me the means to buy a, a punk in the first place. When I um, when this when this project that I was working on with this bunch of friends um, on this like decentralized identity thing um, didn't make the cut, we did like decided not to release it. I was like, damn, I really want to do something and apply all the knowledge that I've um, uh, everything that I've learned over the past few months. Um, uh, and then um, this idea came about building um, an extension to something that already existed. Um, so there is a decentralized identity product out there. Uh, the, the best one is the punks. Um, so why not take what is there and instead of doing something um, entirely new, um, I, I decided to to build an extension basically of 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 that and and uh, given my appreciation for for like on a technical level for for the punks and um, the pixel art also like it's it's approachable right I felt confident even though I hadn't properly done art in in years to like um, design something compelling um, and uh, so yeah I had this idea of building basic homes for the punks. Um, in terms of first, it was just a background, and then um, the banner of, uh, as like a cover photo for Twitter, etc. So I extended just the twenty-four by twenty-four pixel background to a seventy-two by twenty-four pixel uh, background, and the whole thing was yeah, like let's expand to like digital identity, um, uh, uh, and and let's give these punks a home. A lot of the punks look quite similar, right? So um, let's give people the opportunity to like customize the design even more, express their values by showcasing what they like and in, in, in terms of like the home that they put their punk in. So that, that was the idea basically. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, I didn't have a punk at the time. So actually what I, what I did while building that, the idea came, damn, I don't have a punk. I really want to build this, this project. I think it's a dope idea. Um, but uh, uh, it's also weird not to have anything to put on it. So um I built this uh, uh, this little collectible of ten thousand. One day I'll be a punk punks, which are very cheap black and white copies of the of the original crypto punks. Um, but uh, it's like a little funny N- NFT that was a free uh, like an early access ticket and free mint to the punkscapes, and that was what I first uh, released. So myself and all my friends that didn't have a crypto punk were able to like play play with the punkscapes. Uh, and I thought the idea of like um, crypto punks at the time were already for like so many people completely out of reach to have something um, where people that felt like me, like I really want to own a punk one day, one day I'll be one of these punks, <laughs> um, uh, minted that. And that was like 
that was for me, that was the craziest. I had like, I was complete nobody. I had like 300 followers on Twitter and I launched the One Day Punks to like my friends, I thought maybe 50 people and mint them. And on that day, it was the number one contract on Ethereum right after OpenSea. Um, it was 10 hours, all the, and the unique thing about it was there was only one address allowed per punk. So you can't collect it. You have to like do it on a secondary wallet. Some people did that, um, but but it was 10,000 addresses buying these 10,000, uh, uh, one day I'll be a punk punks. <laughs> and um, then that also gave me the, the, um, the like the community to, to then sell and market the punk scapes to not only the crypto punks, um, but also these these uh, one day punks and and then when these landscapes came out, uh, it, they they took some time to mint out, um, but um, yeah, so it did, and then that gave me the means to to buy the the crypto punk eventually. Okay, cool. So, yeah. uh, so is it, and, and, and that's what I'm working on since then. Sorry to to close that to go back to your question. Yeah. Oh, I mean that, that's huge. So let, let's just sort of unpack that a little bit. So, so basically, I've got uh, one day punks. It's a collection I can see on OpenSea. Yeah, uh, it's sort of like a black and white silhouette of all the punks, right? Uh, yes. Which is kind of funny. Yes. And cool. I didn't really think much about it. It was just, hey, if you want in early on the punkscapes, um, here you go. And it was more from a technical standpoint. I found it, thought it was interesting to build like a suite of smart contracts that speak to each other. So do something like. Uh, 24 hours before the the punkscape sale goes live to everybody, only one day punks can buy it. Like these kinds of interactions, I thought would be interesting as a portfolio uh, uh, piece. Uh, so that's why I that's why I did it, and then it turned out to be like crazy good marketing in a way. <laughs> of course. And so, so did people have to cl people have to claim the one day punks? Yes. And they... so they were just a free mint that they, they could uh, claim on the on the website. Um, yeah. and I don't just through word of mouth, like I did nothing and I had no expectation and just went complete bonkers. It was like a true, whoa, internet, I get you moment for me, like uh, crazy. That's, that's amazing. And, and i just having a look at the distribution here too. It's pretty, pretty amazing, right? You've got them 9,984 owners. So across a 10 K collection. Yeah, they, they, like, okay, there's a bunch that are stored on, on like, uh, other smart contracts. Um, okay. but it's like impossible to have more than one punk. Um, on on one privately held uh, uh, wallet. Got it. So Got it. Um, a normal, like a smart contract wallet can hold, hold more than one, but a normal wallet can only hold one. Got it. <laughs> and, then, and then basically the one day punks allow them to mint a punkscape. It's almost like a mint pass, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've been, I've been playing around with these punkscapes and it's kind of cool, right? Because it's got like moving moving sort of backgrounds um, yes. and you can sort of play with them. And I think there's music that pops up in the background as well. Yes. Um, but there's a bunch of stuff we added then, like after the mint, there was, the community was super involved and a few people like just provided value nonstop. And then um, we ended up, like I ended up gathering them in a, like a core team um, for the project and, and all these little things that we added. In the beginning, it was just the pixel art. And then we added these like interactive animations, the music. Um, we added this like AI painting project that every day one one punkscape is is painted by an AI and auctioned off, and the holder gets fifty percent of the proceeds and stuff like like we we just experimented a bunch um, around the original project and extended it and added stuff to it. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. And, and and so where where do you want to take this next? Like what's what's in your I guess your roadmap and. Yeah, fair, fair question. So, I mean, over the last few months, it became kind of obvious that um, just like it's a very um, it's 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 a niche and very unknown project, right? Like it's not a big project, and um, I mean, it's 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 crazy successful and huge for 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 me, but it's not something um, at least right now uh, to like uh, run as a sustainable business, I guess. Um, so that realization over the past few uh, months. Um, uh, uh, did like realign, I guess, some of the um, thinking behind what I want to do with the project. Um, I, I want to get it to a point where it's like a complete package and it's not quite there yet, um, I feel. So there's some stuff that's still coming just for the, 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 the punkscapes. Um, but um, on the side, I'm, we're starting to re like, 
Um, th there's this one product that we built um, called the Scape uh, Builder, which invited all the other collections, uh, or not all, but a bunch of other collections like the Cyber Kongs and the Apes and uh, Moonbirds and stuff like that, uh, uh, Cryptodes, to to for for, the, for the, these communities to place their pixel art on the punkscapes and like build banners for 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 their communities basically, um, realizing that the punkscapes actually like are not like they work great with all kinds of PFP projects, um, and the, the we, we're like building something around around this as a standalone software product. Um, and it like, gives me a lot of comfort because that's what I what, what I what I do best, like just building stuff and um, just uh, uh, doing something for the wider community is I think um, much more sustainable, has, has more potential to grow than just focusing only on, on the collectible. Um, and yeah, which is a small com community by by design, right? So there's not a lot of okay. growth potential there unless like the token appreciates in value um, uh, uh, in crazy ways. But I don't feel like trying to force that in any way is the is the right way forward. So um, I'll, 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 that the punkscapes are sort of I want them to be what they are for what they are, and uh, yeah. No, it's 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 beautiful, right? And I think. Um... It it sort of sings, you know, very strong punk values in some ways. Is that you know you're not you don't seem like you're out there to extract value from everybody. You're there just experimenting and building, um, and the pixel art and they go they they go well and with with the punk right and they sort of place their sort of mm. pixel provenance. And so um, so yeah, man, I'm 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 rooting for you in the in the sort of the back end. But uh, I don't know, man. Like I I think. It might be one of those sleeper projects where you know it took four or five years for punks to really kick off man you, you just don't know oh yeah you, uh, i mean i I'm, I'm, I'm super <laughs> bullish long term on them like i think they're very like we i th th that really didn't exist before like to expand the identity play on the the banner um and then i mean we added so much like the on the website you have like these ens profiles so if you have an ens domain and the punk is in there and the escape is in there you get like a complete um uh, uh, um, mini profile with your uh, in, on ENS you can like I was um, a huge fan of ENS on there you can also like set your website links and telegram and twitter and, and, and email and these kinds of things and then those are displayed in a nice way on like the punk profiles that we built out um, stuff like that and I think like through this like unique uh, 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 perspective on uh, integrating with punks, integrating with ENS. I think one day, we'll, I, I don't know, probably tripping, but <laughs> that's my that's my optimistic thesis on them. That that at one point, um, it's appreciated for being like an innovator in in that in in that space. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm 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 sure uh, once this goes out, a lot of punks that hear the story, they're going to start sweeping floors, mate. So um, just to see. <laughs> <Let's> see. <laughs> Awesome, and and so, mate, when you when you look back at your NFT career, um, you know, and it sort of feels like it's uh, been a long, long time, but reality is, it sounds like it's only just been a year and a bit, right? It sounds like you just really getting yeah, started. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do Do you have like a sort of a a memorable, you know, win or loss or learning that really sort of has stuck with you that you'll sort of carry on or you would like to share? Mm. Um, I mean, uh, <laughs> I get, I guess like punkscapes was a huge win for, for me. Like didn't expect that at all at the time. And then, I mean, um, they minted for 0 0.03 ETH. So, um, it was a huge win. Um, and I guess the, if I have like a regret is that I didn't take anything out. I was like, um, <laughs> uh, is this gonna go like, whatever? Um, so the, the, I guess it would have been smart. And, and as I said, like, I, I don't come from like the investing world. So I didn't really like, um, um, it would have been wise, I guess, and like take 50% or something, be set for a few years and don't have to worry about any finances. Um, uh, the, but, but, but on the other side, like the, the amount of people I got to know, like uh, meeting other punks like you in, 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 in New York and uh, all the new learnings like there's nothing really like, like only great gratefulness uh, for for the past one and a half years um so even like i i did a couple bad trades i, I bought ens when it was like at 50 uh bought a bunch i uh um 
I don't know, uh, but but that's just what it is, right? Like I don't, I try not to think about it too much. It doesn't, uh, um, uh, it, it's not uh, conducive for good moods. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, no, punk punkscapes is definitely a, a huge win, and uh, definitely uh, crypto has been a very humbling experience for all of us, right? So um, yeah, cool. And then when you look into, I guess the the, the Twitter space. Uh, do you have like a favorite punk personality you like tuning into um, that mm. has insights for you that's helped you along the um, journey? I mean, I, I love I love when I see uh, like punks just being being nice and spreading good vibes on on Twitter. Um, so so um, I appreciate uh, uh, all of them. Um, I, I guess six five two nine is just epic. Um, from like a this also this like going back to this idea around pseudon pseudonymous identity he's a huge inspiration um of course um um uh, yeah yeah i i i guess him yeah <laughs> yeah i i think uh, he comes up on most interviews as well so definitely he's uh, dropped a lot of insight for a lot of uh, a lot of other people in yeah. the space too um yeah. and if you could describe punk culture in a few words um how would you describe it for you um so punk culture um it's like it has a builder vibe that it's a it's a being in it for the values around the space more than the pump um um yeah, being being technical, I, th I think to some extent, or at least interested in 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 the underlying like workings of these things, um, um, and uh, yeah, just on the on the edge of of technology, I I guess um, optimistic about the future. Um, so sort of that's that's how I I would frame it. Beautiful. And if you could pass on a message, I guess, to the next owner of your punk, what would you like to say hmm. to them? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I already had that once uh, with uh, when I exchanged my my punk for the for the flat uh, chin, <laughs> right? Um, good. I actually didn't pass on a message. I should. Um, I gifted him escape uh, the the six a two o matching escape to the punk. Um, I think I would say, um, like spread positivity, be a good steward, um, create things, build things, uh, provide value to, to the rest of the community in some way. Yeah. I I'd hope actually, like I I'd love for the next owner to be like a museum or something. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be incredible. Uh, but if it's, well, a, if it's somebody uh, else, it's also wonderful, of course. Uh, but I hope to hold it for a very long time. So, um, why, uh, why have all things a museum? Um, it's kind I of a waste, don't you think? Belong in the museum. I don't know. Uh, they're they are great. Like um, the whole digital identity thing is super fascinating and interesting. Um, but I think for like, um, uh, it's also by design not accessible right um uh, uh, it's just 10,000 so fascinating about it so i think it's like their legacy will one day to be in in like the biggest museums and to 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 be uh, and through that find their place and like history and being accessible for everybody i think like while the whole digital identity thing is extremely exciting one day that will sort of pass and they will become like just these historical artifacts that inspired um this new wave of 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 um of like understanding of, of what ownership even means and what value is and uh, what we can do technically on on the blockchain right so going back to the marketplace i still think like it's just so genius uh, and and that will inspire not only like trading art but all like i'll be able to to buy and sell actual land uh, through the blockchain and and um all of that will in some way be attributed to the to the crypto punks i think um so yeah i, I think they they should end up in like a museum and public spaces and, and stuff like that i um i i i i feel you um but it's almost like when you have a really nice car, is it better to be driven or to watch it 
you know, observe it in, a, you know, in a museum. Right. And I sort of feel, I feel like. I think a nice car is good to be driven, but it's, when it's an old timer, it's, it's good at some point to, to for it to they, end up in they, they're getting rare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So no, no, no doubt. I think, um, yeah, they definitely belong in a, in, in a museum, but hopefully, uh, you know, people get a lot of value and use out of them too. Um, awesome. And, and then Jalil, uh, this has sort of been really fun, man. Um, I guess any sort of closing comments on your side that you'd like to leave listeners with? Um, no, nah, I mean, uh, um, if anybody wants to reach out, uh, I am always interested in, in, uh, getting in touch with, with the punk community, getting to know punks in real life. If you ever come through Bavaria, like, um, just the other week, I, I, I had a punk uh, visiting Munich and, um, I took him to the, uh, to the mountains and we went for a hike, uh, um, up Amazing. a nice, nice mountains So something like, like just reach out and, um, um, love to learn about all of the other people in the space. I'm, I'm sometimes active on, on discord and, and you can, uh, reach out on Twitter. Um, yeah. Happy to learn more about what other people are, are building and doing. I'll put your details in the show notes so people can sort of connect and reach out with you. Um, but, I, but I, I do just, just a closing thought for me is that I, I do feel like this is a really beautiful thing, right? I think all punks I've interviewed so far are based all over the world, mm. a series of different backgrounds, you know, see things differently, came in different ways. Um, but, but fundamentally I sort of feel like everyone shares, you know, very similar values about, about the punks and, you know, um, mm about how to behave and, and what we are. Um, so the whole builder theme uh, is definitely coming out of it for sure. So, uh, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm quietly confident and really bullish on, on punks and uh, where we go from here. But um, Jalil, thank you so much for your time this evening. And um, yeah, l- we'd love to sort of reconnect with you. And if you're ever in Hong Kong, definitely sort of hit me up. Um, thank you so, thank much. You so much. I will. For, yeah. Yeah. Thank um, and you. Guys, for, it was an honor to be on, and and um, yeah, looking forward to see what what's next with the podcast. It's exciting. It's awesome. Very cool. Thank you, um, guys. That that wraps up for another weekend of Punkcast. Uh, so we'll be back again another week uh, with another punk next week. Until then, ciao.